Model steam engines top tip time part 68. In this one I'm showing how to convert a tender hand pump into a standalone hand pump. Even though eventually I fitted this Castle Steam V6 boiler with a steam pump, I also needed a hand pump with a good capacity. And all of the large hand pumps I could find had a single large water inlet underneath the valve barrel. All of these video clips are edited from a video I made quite a while back called a boiler feed hand pump conversion. It's time to get on with the show. This type of hand pump is meant to be inside the water tank of a tender and that's why the inlet for the water on the pump is just a hole in the bottom because this is normally totally immersed in water so the water enters the pump through this hole. But this design is really no good for what I need for this installation. I need to fit a pipe union on the inlet to the hand pump which will be fed with water from a remote water tank. I could quite easily make a right angled water fitting and thread it 5 sixteenths by 32. But here's what I prepared earlier. I just looked in my box of bits and I found an old Stuart clack valve. So all I had to do was thread the water inlet 5 sixteenths by 26 threads per inch to suit the clack valve because it is 26 threads per inch and not 32 threads per inch as with the CME standard clack valves. Now there is a 90 degree union sticking out of the pump as you can see the pump is not going to sit level on any surface so I need to make an extender block on which to mount the pump and this extender block in turn will be screwed down to the baseboard. So I'm cutting the block on my old bandsaw. At this stage I thought I would quickly insert a view of the Castle V6 boiler before going over to the milling machine to clean up the block that I've just cut from this piece of bar stock. And the milling cutter is in my very old Jacobs chuck which is very stiff and it never works loose and it's just convenient to clamp it in there. I could use an R8 collet or even my Clarkson milling chuck but for general bits of milling this is perfectly acceptable. I just put the milling cutter into the drill chuck and tighten it up and it never works loose. Although at this point I must add that if I was doing an important piece of milling like on a casting I would probably use the milling chuck. This is quite a nice effect, it looks like something from a science fiction film. All I've done is put some 3-in-1 oil on the top surface and as the metal chippings coming off the steel are very very hot the oil smokes just like you can see here. And the effect is even stranger if I speed up the video. I must confess that I'm guilty of not applying sufficient cutting lubricant to pieces of metal that I'm cutting either in the lathe or in the milling machine. What I'm doing here is using a felt tip pen and I'm blackening each corner of the piece of metal and that's so when I scribe the marks through the holes of the pump I'll be able to see them. And in this clip I'm scribing lines between the mark points just to make sure that they are in the correct place and they seem to be. It's always a good idea to do this just to verify that all the markings are fully in line with each other because the other alternative is to drill the holes in the wrong place and you don't want to do that. From time to time I still drill holes in the wrong place. I'm not perfect at this, not by a long way. But with years of experience my eyes are reasonably well calibrated. As usual I'm starting off with the centre drill to spot the holes in the correct position. And then by setting the depth stop of the drilling machine it allows me to drill the holes all to the same depth. I'm going to thread these holes 6BA and I'm currently using a number 48 drill for this. This is a very small drill bit so I'm trying not to put too much pressure on it as I don't want it to break off in the hole. Now I'm going to thread these holes using the 6BA tap and the lubricant that I'm squirting onto the upturned tobacco tin is my usual lubricating oil that I make up from 1000 grade steam oil 50%, 3-in-1 machine oil 25% and the magic ingredient rapeseed oil or canola oil and this makes up the other 25%. I find this oil mixture to be really effective when lubricating the bearings of steam engines. It's just a bonus that it's also very good for the lubrication of taps and dies when thread cutting. And in no time at all I have four 6BA threads in the corners of the metal block. Now it's time to use some Loctite 603 to hold these four brass bolts in place. And because I used the depth stop on the drilling machine when I drilled the holes, all I have to do now is screw the brass bolts in place into the holes as far as they'll go. Once all of the bolts were screwed into place in the block, I used my bandsaw to cut the heads off the bolts because I don't need the heads in place. 
I'm actually making studs. Studs can often look a lot better than little bolts, and far better than slotted screws. So here's the pump sat on its block, and all I have to do now is simply bolt the pump to the block. But not just yet, I need to drill a couple more holes because the block itself will need to be screwed down to the baseboard. I'm checking the dimensions with my steel ruler before I commit myself and drill the holes all the way through, and as usual, I pilot the holes using a centre drill. After the centre drilling had been completed, I drilled the holes all the way through with a 3 16ths of an inch diameter drill. I have two choices. I can fasten this component down onto a metal plate using a pair of countersunk 2BA bolts, or alternatively I can screw the component down onto the wooden baseboard using a couple of wood screws. So what I need to do now is countersink the holes. And as you can see from this clip, I'm using my oil mixture to lubricate the countersink. And once again, I used the depth stop on the drilling machine to make sure that both of the countersinks were identical. I'm about to paint this component, and to stop the paint from getting on the threads, I'm using some old silicone rubber tubing, and don't ask me why it's pink. Before I start to paint this part, I'm just removing any burrs from around the edges of the countersinks using a needle file. I'm painting this block with etch primer. And as usual, this is Precision Paints etch primer, as I've shown in previous videos. And this is HMG Paints Black Satin, which will be the top coat. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.